Catching a pedal on a root or a rock absolutely sucks. Ask me how I know. Is bigger always better? Despite Western culture norms and the world of levers attached to our bicycles, shorter has become the latest rage. And if there's anything modern mountain bike culture loves more than carbon fiber, it's most definitely keeping up with the latest trends. Top free riders were mentioning in the Ripple Rampage that they love short cranks, mentioning 140 to 155 millimeter lengths. Your favorite pro's favorite pro is this fellow, Remy Morton, and he recently posted a bike check with 135 millimeter cranks. Now it's very on trend right now to love 165 millimeter cranks. I'm no exception to that, but if you're a bike reviewer online, it's also very on trend to rave about stubby little cranks. Today, I'll be zigging instead of zagging and sharing my experiences with 150 millimeter crank arms. I started riding 170 millimeter cranks back in the early 2000s. Since I've been running a single chainring drivetrain since around 2003, I was always standing and grinding. Right away, I noticed that it was more comfortable to pedal my intense M1, Specialized SX, Yeti ASX, or even my old Santa Cruz Heckler, all while standing with those slightly shorter cranks. Fast forward another dozen years, and around 2017, I started dropping down to 165 millimeter cranks. The difference of five millimeters shorter is pretty minor, and I had zero downsides to the 165s. I do spin a relatively quick cadence, but not outside what's considered normal. I had a very real reason to ride shorter crank arms as I desperately needed more clearance for an injury earlier this summer. My toe and foot are broken, big toe, foot, and I can't really smack it in the ground real hard, so I'm gonna ride clipping pedals. Clipless. That helps a bunch. I've been riding the last month or so and I feel pretty safe. And then like the shoe they gave me is nowhere near as stiff as a clipping shoe. So in an effort to stay safe, I reached out to my friends over at Praxis and they sent me this box in the mail along with a sweet t-shirt. Thanks Ross, thanks Adam. Thanks, Corey. Thanks, guys. Praxis is like right around the corner from Ibis and Santa Cruz and all that. The guy that runs Praxis, Dave Earl, used to be the head of engineering at Santa Cruz Bikes many years ago and before that at Bontrager. And he's designed a bunch of famous mountain bikes over the years. Chainring, 30 tooth, narrow wide offset chainring, Praxis bottom bracket, and then a set of Praxis cranks. But these cranks are super special. These cranks are only 150 millimeters long. That's shorter than like e-bike cranks. Yeah, I'm very curious what it's like to ride 150 mil cranks in reality. My feet are gonna be so safe with these stubby little things. This bike has more suspension travel than the length of these cranks. That's saying something. All right, we're gonna ditch these SRAM GX cranks. We'll throw these guys on. Oh, ho, ho. much shorter. And these current cranks are 165s. And I've got a 30 tooth on there now. Cool. This will be a very chill bike for going uphill. With the small crank arms, it might feel like it's a taller gear. I don't think it would make a difference, but yeah, could. 30 tooth. Uh, let's bolt this all up and see how it goes. I'm very curious what this feels like. When I pedal my six year old daughter's 20 inch Prevello around, uh, it has similar length cranks, and it's kind of silly, but it seems to work, so we'll see. We will also be installing a brand new chain. Cool. Huge thanks to my friends at Shimano for hooking me up a little care package. I got some brake pads, chain, a few other things. I need more stuff. This pedal's all bent from riding the HD6 the other day. Focus, focus. Those cranks combined with this bike in general, I think are gonna end up being a really fun combo for the bike park. We have another month left until bike park season ends. Let's take this rig up to some <laughs> completely unsafe places and just get after it. Why not? And because this bike is so much fun, I went for red grips with green one-up accents. Thanks to one-up for the product. Thanks to WTB for the saddle, the tires, Santa Cruz slash reserve for the test wheels, and Envy for the cockpit. I'm gonna head outside and bed in the brake pads. It's raining pretty good, so I'm not gonna bother filming this. Okay. Uh, See you soon. So as you're attempting to ride with these stubby short little crank arms, you're gonna be pedaling a lot harder than normal and you're gonna blow right through your water supply. You're gonna end up electrolyte depleted and a little bit possibly dehydrated way faster than normal. There's an easy way to combat that. In all seriousness though, on most bike rides over two hours or so, I've been having really good success with putting a simple electrolyte supplement in my water bottle. And often I'll supplement this with a full hydration pack and that keeps me going almost a whole day. I've been lucky enough to partner with the fine folk over at Element 
spelled LMNT, and they make a really simple supplement. It's just sodium, potassium, magnesium, a little bit of stevia. The stuff tastes pretty good. For a limited time now, Element's offering any of you here on my YouTube channel who make a purchase from the Element website using my link down below, you'll get a free sample pack with that purchase. The link is drinkelementlmnt.com slash Jeff, J-E-F-F. This is the orange salt flavor. I'm running it in this really fun little water bottle, and I'm enjoying it. Big thanks to Element for their support, and thanks to all of you for trying it and letting me know in the comments how much you like it. We're gonna drink the orange salt because it's gonna blend in with the maple leaves here. Stay salty, everyone. Are we recording? Perhaps. Well, we're up here at the top of Garbanzo, so let's drop in on freight train to no joke to, to the Yee. other trails. Oh, there's some art pump. Okay. My hands are starting to leave the chat. Let's see if they can come back. Oh God! Oh. What better spot to break in a rebuild of this long travel enduro bike than Whistler Pike? Initially, I was expecting zero pedaling, but then I got a bit of a surprise. Is the lift not open anymore? Not closed. Oh shit, how's the, how do we get back to the uh, village? Uh, you'll have to take the trail back around along the road there. Oh, by the highway? Yeah. Okay, so there's that. I'm now stuck at Whistler Creekside. I'm gonna have to ride on the highway the uh, couple miles back to the other side of Whistler. All right, road ride and children's cranks. Here we go. Oh man, Let's see if I can make it in time to do one more run. Jeez, this sucks. I rode the shorter cranks at the bike park and things generally went pretty well, but I think the big question here isn't how much how they go down the hill, but how they go up the hill. Well, to properly test that out, we went to a little town you may have heard of. It's known as Squamish. Okay, transition spire, just as it is from the bike park yesterday. Didn't change anything, not even pressures. It's a solid climb to get up here, like 2,000 feet or something. The small crank arms, man, look at these things. They're so little, so much clearance. Definitely, you feel it on the up. And what you mostly feel is that your gearing feels harder, uh, significantly harder. I wish I had a 28 tooth on there instead of the 30 tooth that's on there now. I'd work pretty hard on a bunch of the steeper little pitches. This bike climbs well, but it's long. It's a lot to manage through the switchbacks, but it's nice having clearance with the pedals. So I don't know what the best setup is yet, but we'll keep trying different setups until we find something we like. I do wish the seat post could go a little lower. What a difference it makes going down another 15 millimeters for crank length. It's important to note that a lot of those free ride voices you've been hearing are folks that either shuttle, chairlift, or hike up the mountains. While I certainly at times wish I was able to more gluttonously enjoy the mountains, I almost always end up self-propelling on ascents, using these cranks to actually pedal the bicycle forward and upward. What I found was that for me, trying to pedal with the 150 millimeter cranks was a bit of a joke. I would sit and spin and spin and spin and shift so often yet seemingly kind of go nowhere. When friends tried to ride my bike, they would simply laugh and call me an idiot. I committed to the small crank arms, riding them for over two months. I got about as adapted to them as I could ever get. I rode them clipped in, and I rode them with flat pedals. I did certainly prefer them with the clips though. So spinning along with my little 150 crank arms, there's this ledge right here, and check this out. I just barely nick it if I totally mistime my pedal stroke. But I don't get stopped, I don't really have any kind of a big problem. So as I'm pedaling up a climb and I get to an exposed rock challenge like this, I shift to an easier gear to grunt up it. But check out what's going on. I'm in second gear, I'm not even in first gear. It feels like your power band is quite a bit narrower with the shorter crank arms. And that in turn means your gearing is more significant. With the 165s and 170s I'm used to, you can push through the wrong gear much more easily. With the shorter crank arms, you got less tolerance for being in the wrong gear. Now your foot speed is a lot slower because you're closer in. So as you get further out, your feet travel more distance for the same amount of time, therefore they're faster. So I think there's something to do with the momentum of how fast your feet are spinning, or in this case, how slowly they're spinning and the lack of momentum to carry through with those different gearing choices. I could go with the 28 tooth, but it's gonna be the same issue. Let's go keep our feet safe and hit some descending. That was so necessary. 
In the end, I'm glad to be moving these cranks off any bike I'll ever be pedaling. Remy Morton isn't running a drivetrain on his bike, it's fully shuttle only. Some might just call that a scooter, but I'll let you make your own decision there. In the goal of science, it was time to mount these stubby little things to my pump track bike. If the freeriders enjoy these for jumping, maybe I'll like them for pumping. This kind of bike used to be called a slalom bike or a four cross bike. Nowadays it's called a dirt jump or pump track bike. And nowadays they're all single speed. I'm Captain Old School here. All right, 150 millimeter crank arms are on the bike. Will my chain guide work? If you've never installed a chain guide before, it takes about six tries usually. And it's not gonna probably work. All right, well, we'll have a Bosch taco, but I'm, uh, we're just gonna go ride because this is taking too long. Out of patience. First reactions, pump track and get it. So they feel different than the longer cranks. Exactly how? Hard to say. I feel like it's a little easier to balance, but I don't get quite as much of a pump when I'm loading into the bike. So it's not quite what I was expecting. It's like a when you go to pedal, you gotta spin real fast, but it's also harder to spin. It's almost kind of similar in that to generate your speed, you just push harder. It's like being more central you got less pitching to worry about with the bike. It's a different feel. A world better? Nah, definitely different, but not as extreme as it was trying to pedal down the street. It would be interesting to sample 160 and 155 millimeter cranks, but these are very hard to find. With how much I enjoy my 165 cranks, I don't plan on putting in that much effort to change things up. But if cranks of those lengths do fall into my lap, I'll certainly give them a try. Sorry, not sorry, but the trend of crazy short cranks doesn't seem to really work for me. I'm sure so many of you are composing comments telling me I'm wrong, and that's fine. I'm allowed to be wrong, and you're also allowed to be wrong too. It's okay. But please, do something right, and scroll down to that subscribe button just below. Peace and wheelies, fellow mountain bikers. Not a complete test without dirt jumps. Oh! <laughs> okay, note to self, don't um, do that again. Oh God. Spin some laps. I'm not in pump track shape to spin laps. I could spin a lap. Yeah, that. Every two minutes. That.